Welcome to the future of spelling. My name is Sir Link a lot, as I like to link a lot. Linking is a fun and easy way to remember things by trying to find a connection, a link, and it is really good for spelling. So good for spelling. Before I start today's lesson, I've got two for two shout outs. Shout, 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 shout. Shout outs. Two shout outs. Shout outs. The first one up is from a boy called Harris, who's either is in year three, either seven or eight years old. Harris has got a great link here for the spelling of cooperation. A difficult word, but not anymore. Over to the big H. The word cooperation. The name Cooper. It, the word rat and the word operation is in the word link. Cooper, my, my rat, was so good at the operation. When he had an op when he had an operation, he got a cooperation sticker. Check him out. Go on, Harris. Good work, Cooper. That's great. Rat Cooper operation opera is there as well. Excellent work. Looking at inside words. What's inside words? Really, really good. Tremendous. Give him 10 out of 10 for that, because at the end of the word operation is the number 10, I-O, is again, I-O-N. Excellent work, you got yourself a badge, and obviously a shout out, a shout out. And the next one is from a 10 year old boy called Cameron. Now Cameron, put up the word Cameron here, the boy's name Cameron. If you order some Mackie D's, oh Mackie D's, only a treat once in a while, Mackie D's, Mackie D's. Um, you say, oh, here comes the food, and along came Ron. Along, and along came Ron with our food, and along came Ron. Cameron came Ron. Is it in? You know this. Is it in? <sighs> you know this. So, I'll get rid of Cameron. He said for the word really, here's the word really. He spotted lots of words inside the word really. This is really good stuff. Really good stuff. Really, 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 really good stuff. But let's put you on the clock. Let's see if you can find some tricks here. Tricks, some words inside the word really. You've got five seconds. Here we go. What did you see? What did you see? The word real. The word all, the word ally. Anything else? I think that's it, isn't it? All, ally, real, and re all those words. All, real, ally. We're an ally to each other. We all really like linking. We all really like linking. It's real and it's there and it's in, or something like that. Put it all together. It's great. Nice work, Cameron. Well spotted, Cameron. You got yourself a badge. And of course, this shout out. This shout out. This shout out. So, today's lesson is lesson 56, and it's other things inside words, levels three to five, and Susie's stories. Susie, Lady Lex, is on the app, is on, not on the app, is on in this lesson today. Fantastic, she's in the lesson. Yee! We love Lady Lex, she's great. So, other things inside words, not necessarily words inside words. The first one up is sizzling, sizzly, 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 sizzling, 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 so other things inside words that are not necessarily words. Over to my link. 
Sausage. The word is made up of four countries. In South Africa, they call a sausage a borvos. In the USA, a hot dog. Hot dog, hot diggity dog. In Germany, they call it a frankfurter. And in England, a sausage. Hot dog, hot diggity dog. Hot dog, hot diggity, diggity, diggity dog. South Africa, USA, Germany, England. Different names for sausages around the world. Come on! Come on! Oh, it's a goodie. We love a sausage. A sea sausage. Sticking with the American theme of hot dogs, hot dogs, hot diggity dogs. Um, let's get the next one up, which is... Special. Special. Look at this one. Speciale. That's speciale. That's it. No discussion. End of story. Whatever. <laughs> speciale. Speciale. Why is that a shh? <laughs> That's special, isn't it? Sorry, sp sorry speciale. It is special. It's a special word. Speciale. Come on, special, really? Now, let's put you on that clock. On that clickety clock. What can you see inside here that's not a word but it's a sort of group of people. What can you see? You may not know this word. I think most of you will, or this, uh, this term. I think you will. But I've got a good trick if you haven't heard of it before in the animation. So, here we go. Did you see it? Did you see it? Mm-hmm. to my link. Special. Who's that hiding in the word? Aha! The CIA have got special agents who hunt down criminals in action. The CIA have got special agents who hunt down criminals in action or they try and stop crime in America. The initials, criminal in action, crime in America. And there are seven letters in special. Or should we say 007 letters? <laughs> Bit of James Bond. Now you can spell special. You can spell loads of other words beginning S-P-E-C-I. In fact, let's put you on the clock in. There are lots of words beginning S-P-E-C-I. Can you think of any in the next five seconds? Here we go. Did you get any? One, two, three. Check out all these words. Hello. Words beginning S-P-E-C-I. The first five letters of the word special are also the first five letters of many other words, including specialize, specialism, specialist, specially, specialty, specific, specifically, specification, specify, specimen, and the final one where all the other words come from, species. All those words? Who knew? Me. The next one up is... Convenience. Convenience. So, I spotted here two compass points next to each other inside a famous southern South European city which is not dry. Can you spot this? See what you can see, see what you can find. Here we go. Did you see it? You see the two compass points next to each other inside a famous city? Over to my link. Just one Cornetto. Convenience. Con is next to the city Venice that is split by E for East and N for North, as Venice is on the east coast of North Italy. Look out for the con when going for a ride in Venice, as there's always one dodgy gondolier. Or should that be condolier? There's lots of water in Venice, and there's lots of water in a public convenience, which is a loo. <laughs> 
go. Well done to be spotted east and north inside Venice. Tremendous effort. The next one up is... <clears throat> Serious. Serious. Right. Let's combine what you've seen today. There's a compass point here next to an abbreviation for a city next to an abbreviation for a country. Oh, lots of fun. Lots of fun. You got five seconds. Here we go. Did you find them? I hope you did. <clears throat> Serious. Three abbreviations make up this word. S-E, meaning southeast. Rio, which is short for the Brazilian city Rio de Janeiro. And U.S., an abbreviation for the United States of America. Southeast is where Rio is in relation to the U.S. And yes, I am being serious. How superb is linking? Not only just spelling, sausages around the world, where countries are, Brazil, Rio, US, come on. Linking's tremendous. Can't get enough. So, the next one up is... Hmm. Hmm. Curiosity. Hmm. Now, there's a something you just spotted a minute ago, you just saw a minute ago, next to a small word near the end. Can you see them? Let's put it on the clock. Here we go. <laughs> did you see them? I hope you did. Meow. Curiosity. Rio which is the abbreviation for the Brazilian city Rio de Janeiro, is next to the word sit. Curiosity was killing this cat, as it was desperate to know why a fat cat from Cheshire was in Rio and was able to sit on lots of money with an even fatter grin on its face and not be bothered that one of his brothers was struggling for money. Not happy. Curiosity. Rio inside curiosity. You've got to be very happy with that. Now, talking of curiosity, if I mention it in a second, it's now Lady Lex time. Lady Lex, how are you this fine Christmas day, Nearest Damn It? I am fine. I'm so sad that I didn't wear any dealy boppers or, or hats to match you. You look amazing. Thank you. Have you not got one in your house? You must have one, surely. I have got some dealy boppers. And yes, the, the Santa hat comes out on Christmas Eve is a bit of a tradition in my house. Um, so, uh, but I should at least have some tinsel on me. I apologise. You should, you should. That's fine, it's fine. Uh, anyway, right. So, uh, yeah, the word curiosity, before we go into our, our uh, sort of uh, what we're doing the subject today. That's a funny, but that's, that's sort of um, made me curious because the word curious has got an O. Of course, C-U-R-U-I. O-U-S, there's two O's there, so two U's, forgive me. Uh, now, we drop the U, we should be curiosity. Why have we got rid of that U? What's your guess, or do you know on that one? Um, I think it might be partly the the drive, which I think we've talked about before, to restore English to its kind of classical beginnings. So particularly in the Middle Ages, people really, really wanted to show off the Latin heritage of, uh, of language. As you know, Andy, also link a lot, we've talked about this. Uh, we are a Germanic language at heart, um, English is anyway, uh, but we are wildly influenced by Latin and Greek and so many of our words come from those ancient languages. And curiosity um, and curious come from the Latin curiosus, which doesn't have that U in the middle, uh, meaning careful. And then cura, uh, C-U-R-A, actually meant care. That's where we get curator from. Uh, curator is somebody you might find at museum who looks after things, who cares for things. And in fact, that was its very earliest uh, meaning of curious. It was to, to be kind of careful in learning knowledge. So you, were, you really took care to, um, to acquire some learning. And then it had a variety of meanings over the century. So I think that was part of the reason was to reflect the Latin beginnings. And the other half is, I think you 
yourself guessed at this, it's easier to pronounce, isn't it? Curiosity uh, would be slightly different. Um, but, you know, we don't know the very first person who changed the spelling, um, but I suspect it was a mixture of both those. Okay, so like O-U-S, like uh, devious, um, cautious, O-U, is that... Is that a French, the U bit? Is that French, like curio? If it was originally Latin, was no U. Did the French throw the U in or somebody else? What do you think? Because there are many words ending O-U-S, aren't there? Um, French for curious is cu curieuse. Uh, so it, there is a U in there, um, but there's an E instead of R-O. So we probably were also, you're right, influenced by the French, which we were a lot after the Norman Conquerors. So, I mean, this is a really good example of just how many influences have come to bear on our language. Yeah, no, it's a good one. I like it. And of course, you are a curator, aren't you, of, uh, of words? Yes, I take care. I try to take care of words, but more often than not, I'm just watching them and marvelling in their beauty. So Sir Linkalot is the creator of links, and you are the creator, the curator of words, with the creator and curator. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, right, so Christmas words. There's some great words out there, and I'm going to clue where some of them come from. I, I really haven't, I've got no ideas. Can you give us, some, uh, give us some nice words and some origins of them, if you don't mind? Yes. Well, I'm going to start with mistletoe because um, most of us, and I think especially if you are young, you probably think mistletoe is a bit of a kind of ugh, yucky thing that encourages people to kiss, uh, which, of course, is um, not a very nice thing to witness if you're a child, I would say. Uh, it's a bit icky. And mistletoe, that it will probably please you because it began... Uh, in the story, and actually it is quite true, that, that mistletoe plant burst forth from the poo of the mistle thrush, which is a bird. The poo of the mistle thrush. Yes, and originally people thought this happened by magic. Um, but of course, nowadays we know that they kind of, you know, it's a bit like compost or manure. Uh, seeds and, and plants propagate very nicely within that kind of environment. So actually mistletoe, if you break it down, uh, means dung on a twig, because the toe bit goes back to an old English word, tan, T-A-N, meaning a twig. So it's dung on a twig or poo on a twig. Not very romantic. <laughs> Couldn't be more from the truth, could it? That's great. Exactly. That's mistletoe. Um, Yule. We talk about this time as being Yule tide. Uh, tide being another word for time. And in fact, that's behind the tides of the sea, um, the times at which the sea ebb and flow. Uh, but Yule is, is now just another word for Christmas, but it comes from a Viking word uh, for a pagan festival at the winter solstice that lasted for 12 days. Um, they celebrated it in late December, early January. And when we adopted Christianity, we simply changed the nature of the festival and turned Yule, which was that Viking word, into um, Yule. And in fact, that same root may have given us jolly as well, because Yule was spelt J-O-L. Right. Okay. So, have we? Uh, so, have, have Christians? Are they hijacked <laughs> at that festival? Will about for Christmas? Well, I don't know if we hijacked. I think it was just a sort of natural, um, organic evolution. I would like to say, rather than, rather than a kind of give us give us your your festival. Um, I think it was more of a natural thing than that. But um, but yeah, I like the fact that Yule and Jolly are ancient siblings. I think that's quite, an, well, not ancient, but you know, going back to the Vikings, that's pretty old. Shall I tell you about toasting someone? Yeah. Because this is also one of my favourites. Yeah, of course. You know, um, adults might raise a toast and uh, younger people can do that still with, with soft drinks in their glass. When we toast someone, uh, you might think, mm, why are we toasting someone? That seems a bit strange. Well, it goes back to the days when pieces of spiced toast were put into wine to improve their flavour. And uh, the idea went on to mean that a piece of spiced toast would improve the flavour of a party just like the guests there. So um, when people were toasting before, they probably had a little bit of spiced toast in their glass, but the idea was also that thank you to you for improving the flavour of the company or the party. So, but with toast, the spice is obviously the buzzy fun bit. Why don't you just put the spice in and forget, putting toast in a bit of wet, wouldn't that be a bit... I know, I agree. It doesn't sound very nice, but I think they kind of, it was a little bit like um, you might put croutons, you know, those fancy bit of toasted bread into a bowl of soup. Maybe that was how they saw it, but I agree. I wouldn't want to swig down a bit of soggy bread, but hey, everyone's got their own taste. Yeah, that's a good one. Toast, that's a really good one. Uh, to toast someone. I've never knew that where the word toast comes from. That's a great one. Of course, we were doing that over the next couple of weeks, I'm sure. What about the word um, yes. 
Advent is a good word, isn't it? Advent. Yes, Advent goes back to the Latin ad uh, meaning to and veneer meaning come or, or venere. So it means um, that something is coming towards us. And of course, it's a Christian celebration of the arrival of, um, of Jesus, of Christ at Christmas time. So it is the coming, the appearance of somebody that or, or something. Um, so that is what we're celebrating, of course, when we're gobbling up the chocolates from our Advent calendars. Right. Okay. So uh, therefore I thought adventure must be something that's coming up. There's something coming soon or something. Something coming towards you. Exactly. Yes, exactly. That's that thing. Um, Advent and adventure are both very close relatives of each other. Um, Then there's the pantomime, which sadly, I don't think many of us are going to see pantomimes this year, but that goes back to Greek words, pan, uh, meaning all or um, everything. And uh, mimos, which meant miming, because in ancient times, uh, in, in Greek and Roman theatre often, an actor would mime all the parts. Can you imagine that? Um, and that pan you will find in lots, and not, not the frying pan, that's slightly different, but you will find it in other words like a panacea, which is a beautiful word, meaning something that cures all ills uh, and a sort of a healing cure uh, for everything, which is lovely. That is. Well, I suppose also, I mean, because the time, pandemic, obviously, must be. Pandemic, absolutely. Yes, we talked about that before. So a pandemic is a global epidemic. Epidemic goes back to the Greek meaning upon the people. So it is something that happens to all the people. But the pan bit means it's global, not just a national thing. I knew about, we touched on uh, a few weeks ago in one of the lessons, uh, phobias, like autophobia is fear of heights, auto, altitude, or acrophobia is also fear of heights acrobat and funny enough I mean, you obviously you know this but vertigo is not the fear of heights it's like vertiginous like dizziness which going to a height makes you too dizzy i know a golfer who's got vertigo not because of heights that's a different thing so we touched on phobia and i know one of them is um i know pantophobia is the fear of everything Everything, exactly. So that's linked to pantomime. Very good. Yeah. Uh, and yes, vertigo goes back to the Latin vertere, meaning to turn. And you will find that in so many English words, whether it's divert, to turn away, revert, to turn back, advert, which is something that makes you look towards it. I mean, there are so many um, verts in English, all down to that one Latin root. Yeah, that is really good. Verts, like avert your eyes. You know, that's... that. that yes. That's, so, that's a really good one, isn't it? Verts. And vertigo, people think, you know, it's a height. It's not, it's not at all. What about, so one more, um, Noel. Is that uh, the first Noel? Sorry, to, do you know about that one at all? Um, no, but I have the dictionary in front of me, so I should remember it. It's French, Sorry. isn't it, for Christmas? Um, so yes, we took it from the French, and it's ultimately based on the Latin natalis, uh, which is to do with birth, because if you um, you might know about prenatal or antenatal um, and that kind of thing, that's all to do with birth. So again, celebrating the birth of Jesus. Good one. Okay, well, for what I would do, one of your Susie stories in a minute, I've got to do natural, because that is a, it's a great animation. It's, it's us two... In the postnatal, we're both born. There's, 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 there's Lady Lex and there's, there's a lot. It's hilarious. It's really, but nature, natural, innate, so all these things again. There's so many words from nature. From is it natere? I presume. Uh, yes, it's all to do, as you say, with with birth, um, and it, natalis meant born um, in in Latin. So they're they're all linked. And then there's another one which is quite sim- similar in Latin, which we perhaps could do one time, which gave us gentle, genteel, um, and uh, oh goodness, also all sorts of English words. It would be good to cover that one at some point as well. Can I do one last one, which is the grotto? Uh, of course, it's a great word. Love the word grotto. It sounds negative, gr- grotto, but I like it. Go on. You're spot on, in fact, because it is a relative of grotesque, which is not what we associate with Santa's grotto. Again, we might have to do virtual, visit virtual grottos this Christmas. But a grotto was originally a kind of picturesque, nice looking cave, um, the sort of place you might choose to have a picnic in. But the grottos of ancient Rome were these deep, dark vaults beneath their buildings and when they were discovered their walls were kind of covered with strange scenes of animal faces and kind of you know human faces wearing these horrible frightening expressions and this art was called pittura grotesca by the italians which meant grotto or cave art but the memory of those horrible faces probably stuck with them and that's why grotesca 
or grotesque came to mean something terrifying or quite simply weird. Whereas we re retain the idea of the cave or the little sort of crypt in the idea of Santa's Grotto, which is not grotesque at all. No, but of course you get the word grotty, don't you, from that? Yes, the Beatles um, were the first to use grottos in A Hard Day's Night, which is um, a film uh, of, of the Beatles. It was George Harrison, one of the, uh, the very famous, well, they were all very famous, but one of the Beatles who first used the word grotty, and he used it as a shortening of grotesque. Oh, so, so did he coin that word then, really? Yeah, that's what we think. Although well, it could have just been Liverpool, Liverpudlian slang, and he might have just, you know, popularised it. But he gives us our first record of grotty, or the film does. Right, okay, that's a good one. And talking of funny words like that, you mentioned the word icky early on, which I think is a brilliant word. Is that linked to sticky at all, or is that just a coincidence? It's not a sort of... That's just onomatopoeia. That is just because it sounds really unpleasant. Ick, and in fact, um, it, I mean, it might be related to sick, I suppose, but if you think about the child's word ickle, uh, which often means little, doesn't it? If you say ickle, um, you can see how they kind of find these sort of words quite easy to pronounce. So icky used to be a kind of childlike exclamation of disgust. I suppose like ick, ick, maybe that sort of thing. Possibly. Ich, yeah, that ich in German means I, so I don't think it's related to that as in I myself. But um, yeah, I think it's just all about the sound. Brilliant. One last thing before we go. Um, you mentioned panacea. I love words that end with that sound because um, there's a girl who, was, who sent me a, a, got a shout out, a shout out, <laughs> a couple of lessons ago. Her name is a lovely name. I'd never heard it before. It's Theodicea, not Theodora. Yeah. And Theodicia, Theodicia. It's like the word excellent. I was one of my lessons recently. I said um, the word excellent. I love the word excellent. It sounds excellent. It should be excellent. It's not a negative word. It's like Theodicia. What's the other word you love um, with the the, uh, the the bird on the, the water? Um, oh, the calmness. Oh, halcyon, halcyon. It's very similar. Yeah. Um, it, it's that, it's that set that we like that s sound. Panacea, Theodicia. It's a very satisfying sound, isn't it? It, yeah, I think Theodicia means given by God, I think, um, is where that comes from. But um, it's a, you're right, it's a beautiful name. And you've just reminded me that the writer of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, J.R. Tolkien, brilliant, brilliant writer who used to work on the Oxford English Dictionary. And in fact, he wrote the entry for Walrus, which is one of my favourite entries in the dictionary. Um, he uh, said that the most beautiful word in the English language, in fact, it's two words really, but it was hyphenated in his time, a cellar door cellar door and i think that's quite similar as well isn't it cellar door sounds soft and beautiful it does it's like yeah door of cellar it is funny some words are all it's lovely some lovely and then there's p the letter p thump plump trump it's such a it's such a hard letter isn't it yes absolutely i mean there are so many onomatopoeias that got a p at the end i'm sure of it there's so many yeah definitely plop is it yes it's a good one i like it that's great. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. It's wonderful stuff. Um, we'll wish you, we'll, we'll watch two of Susie's stories in a second, but we must wish you a wonderful Christmas and we'll see you in 2021. I can't wait. Thank you to everybody who has worked with, um, well, with both of us this year and for loving the Selling Clot app as much as we do. And have a really, really fantastic Christmas, whatever you're doing. We love Susie Lex. Over, Susie Lex, I mixed it up. <clears throat> Susie Stories, Lady Lex, oh, I'm all over the place. Anyway, over to two fantastic Susie Stories. The word natural came to us from Latin and a word meaning to be born. When we're born, we're in the most natural state possible. The same Latin word also gave us native, a person born in a particular land, nativity, the birth of Jesus, and nation, where people are often born from common ancestors. And the neonatal unit in a hospital means the unit for those who are newly born. Genuine is linked to the idea of birth and is a sibling of words such as genetic and generation. But it also has a link with an unexpected Latin word genu, meaning knee, the source of genuflect, meaning to kneel as a mark of respect. And that's because in Roman times, a father would formally acknowledge his newborn child by placing the baby on his knee, showing that the baby was genuinely his. How good were those two stories? Superb, great animation. A baby, Sir Link -a -lot next to a baby Lady Lex. And on the knee as well, brilliant. Superb work, great stories. We love Lady Lexicographer and her stories. Brilliant. 
So that ends today's lesson. Hope you enjoyed the show. Other things inside words. Countries, the US. Uh, cities, Rio. Compass points, SE. Venice, all these things. Okay, really good stuff. Groups of people like the CIA. Brilliant stuff. Such a great technique. Have you got any good links? Let me know. Come on, let me know. Any good ones? Come on. And you'll get yourself a shout out. And also you'll get... One of these badges, if not more than one. The CIA have got special agents who hunt down criminals in action who, or try and stop crime in America. The next one up is Sirius. Southeast is where Rio is in relation to the US. And yes, I am being serious. And then, of course, we've got South Africa, USA, Germany, England. For a Hilly Finishing off with the man himself. Marvellous, 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 marvellous. The last thing I say is, the name of the app is Sir Linkalot. Is it in? Whatever. Merry Christmas and have a link.